Hey everyone, it's Millie. It's Gabby. And welcome back to another week of Change by Degrees. This week we have episode 80, an interview with an extrovert. Yep, and the person we're interviewing is Amanda Johnson, who I have known for several years, and she's really awesome and amazing, and she's probably the most extroverted person that we know, so um, <laughs> this is definitely different for a cha- us. Uh-huh, uh-huh. A because, chance to get a different uh, perspective. Yeah, too. we're both very introverted, as you all hopefully know by now. So, yeah. We hope you enjoy her interview. She's going to talk about uh, moving away from home to a different location that she has, like, no connections in, how she got um, her job there, and uh, how she adapted to life in a completely different environment. Mm -hmm. And um, it was a really good interview, and I really enjoyed it, so we hope you do, too. So thanks for joining us, Amanda. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we're excited that um, you're going to come talk to us. We've been wanting to interview you for a while, but just like finding the right time to do it. I know, you should feel special. <laughs> um, it's true. So you want to tell us about yourself and like what school you went to, what degrees you have, where you um, graduated from, and like, you know, jobs you've had and how you ended up where you're at right now. Yeah, sure. So um, I'm Amanda Johnson. I went to Liberty University for undergrad and grad school. I got my undergrad degree in strategic communication, so like advertising, public relations, that kind of thing, and then continued on and got my MBA from there as well. Um, jobs that I've had, starting back at the beginning, I was a gymnastics coach. That was my first yes. job. Um, and then in college, I was a camp counselor, worked as a Starbucks barista, uh, was an RA for three years, which was the best job ever. Um, and during that time, I interned at a few uh, technical writing uh, with the few companies that where I did technical writing for them. Um, so like World Vision, which is like international development. I did The Motley Fool, which is finance. And I did like some travel company type things. And then after grad school, I went and worked at Zion National Park, just at the gift shop. It was my like uh, plan if I didn't have a full-time job lined up after graduation, I was like, well, let me have something uh, lined up. And thank goodness, because that kind of sparked my interest in the field that I ended up pursuing. Um, Worked there during COVID. So that was also great, because I had something to do (laughs) Um, right after graduation. Then I went home, worked at REI for almost a year. Loved it. Great people, great place. Also kind of in that outdoorsy realm. And then now I work as a support service specialist for one of the ranger districts in the Medicine Bow Route National Forest out in Colorado. That awesome. is so cool. What a journey. I understand definitely the journey you take when you graduate and you think you're going to do something and then you don't end up doing it. Um, but that current job, could you tell us more about it and what you like and dislike? Because I have nothing, I don't know about camping. I know about, <laughs> I know about camping either. Or hiking. Any like outdoors. Or outdoors, you wouldn't have those people. That's okay. But I would love to kind of get a peek into the world and understand it better because I have no idea. Maybe I'll get into it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You should. Highly recommend it. But I also wasn't super into uh, hiking, camping, anything like that until college. My family loved to travel, but we didn't do a ton of like outdoorsy type stuff. So college was really my first intro into that. And this job kind of combines the best of both worlds in terms of like my professional skill set, like what I did in college, what I studied, my interests and that kind of thing. And then my like fun time hobbies, <laughs> like being outside. Um, so the role is basically like the business admin person at the office. I do a lot of the like paperwork type stuff and purchasing things like when people need something I have the government card that will then buy that for them and like have all the paperwork lined up that way like 100 people aren't purchasing things and get you know the budget gets messed up and whatever um so yeah I work a lot with the budget work a lot with like the hiring process um which I haven't gotten to start yet because our season is about to begin for that so I'm excited to learn that um and then my favorite part about this position is even though it's like mainly a business role, I get to work um, kind of like odd job type things and like take the trail crew out and drive them places, go do trail checks, go like run errands, drop signage at places and kind of get to see what the whole forest service does. Cause um, it's so broad. There's a lot of like little things about it that I wasn't aware of before I started working there. And 
this is a good rule because I have some leeway in terms of what I get help with. And I get, if I'm curious about something, I can ask. Hmm. And that's really cool too. Cause I, on two fronts, cause just like knowing you as long as I have, I know you're like, you're one of like the most extroverted people I know. <laughs> so you doing this job makes sense to me. Um, and also hearing about like, how you started and I didn't expect you to go that far back with like your jobs but when you said it I was like oh my gosh I remember like when you worked in like gymnastics and then yes you, and then I remember when you got your internship uh with the the Motley Pool in DC or Arlington and then you know so just like seeing all your jobs and like how they've aligned with like different parts of your personality and like also different parts of like what you study and how like you just adapt so easily to like different things I don't know if you think that or not but I I definitely think that but that's really cool and it's also really cool that like your job now allows you to discover different things. So you're not like pigeonholed into mm-hmm. one thing because you're kind of like in different areas of the the company or the forest service. Like you get to experience what you actually might want to do. If you want to stay with them or you want to do something in the future with a different company, um, doing something different that you got to experience here. Like, it's just really cool that like in this job, you're exploring like different avenues of what you might want to do in the future. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I definitely think that is probably the biggest like pro of this job is being able to try everything. Cause personally, I don't think I want to work, you know, paperwork, purchasing, all that kind of stuff for my <laughs> yeah, forever. <laughs> I really love people. I really love writing. I really love getting to try all that stuff. But like you said, it's such a good role to be able to try out all of those things, especially like a lot of those positions. Actually, probably all of those positions I would not be qualified for right now because I don't have that background. Yeah. And a lot of the people that I work with are really specialized. Like they went to school for like archaeology, for biology, like for all of these um, more science-based degrees or degrees that are, are really technical. And this is kind of giving me that chance to, yeah, get to see what ones I am most interested in developing those skills for and gaining on the job experience. That's really cool. Do like employees get a special deal or opportunities to explore the park? Like I'm not sure exactly if you have to be in a different department or you as an employee in the office you're at, you can still partake in those special activities. I don't know. Yeah. By, do you mean like explore the park in terms of like the forest or like the different roles? Yeah. I don't know if you guys have special tours or opportunities during different seasons of the year that you can, that's like offered to employees at a discounted price. Like, I don't know. Yeah. So, well, most of the time that I spend in the forest is on the job. I will go hiking sometimes, but like, I don't have to pay for, forests are different than national parks too. Okay. Like yes, national yes. forests to go into them, you don't have to pay. It's just, if you are like hiking or, um, like camping there's like specific things you have to pay for but it's a little different but in terms of like kind of growing those skill sets or tours or like trains things like that um they do offer just random like furthering education type stuff like I went to this hazardous tree training thing last month and it is not relevant to my job at all (laughs) yeah I'm gonna go like this is free it was well you get paid it was like a day of work you know and I got to go and learn from these people who studied you know trees and um timber and all these different things like how to identify when a tree is going to fall and like what (laughs) risk management things do we do and like everyone there was like in timber or they're like the rat crew that maintained the trails and things like that and I was like no I really am interested in this and I want to check it out yeah there's a lot of opportunities if you're just like hey I'm interested I want to go um and just like taking that initiative a little bit even if it's not directly related to your job that's really cool that is really cool and like that that really makes me laugh too because like just once again like knowing you it just really cracks me up that probably everybody there you're the only person who was like I have no clue what's happening right now like so that's really funny um but kind of going back to what like your background as well like you said that um you went to Liberty University which is obviously here in Virginia and like um I know you come from like a military background but you grew up mainly here in Virginia right yes yeah and um now you've moved to you're all the way in Colorado so, like, how has that been like for you, like, moving away, like, hundreds of miles away from home 
where you didn't know anybody into a new job, a new area, an area that's like really different from our metropolitan area. Like, can you just like tell us a little bit like how that was for you? Yes. So the biggest difference with this is for every other like far away job or far away experience that I've had since I was in fourth grade, it's been like an end date attached to it. So I've known at the end of this summer, I'm going to go back home. At the end of this, whatever, I'm going to go back to college. And this is the first time where it's like, well, I'm moving like moving. (laughs) Um, And like you said, it is very different in terms of like the setup of the city. And like, I've always really grown up outside the DC metropolitan area. And now here I am in this, like the small town or the the big city is what the small town would have felt like back home, if that makes sense. Like, um, definitely, definitely a challenge, especially as you mentioned, I love being around people, very extroverted. I just like, more than anything, I just like having people around. It makes me feel safe. And I've been learning things about myself out here. (laughs) Um, I just moved into an apartment, uh, well, like a condo complex kind of thing. And previously, I was literally living out in the middle of the country. And if you had come out and visited me, you would have been like, Amanda, this is the last place I would have ever pictured you. Like, literally, the town probably had, like, 30 people in that area. (laughs) I was driving into Steamboat, which is where I live now, basically every day because that's where activities were and things like that. Um, so yeah, of course, like I knew coming out here, it was going to be a bit of an adjustment. Of course you have to like make friends, build a community and everything. Um, but it's like the amount of options is significantly Mm -hmm. less in terms of where and how to find that. Um, and I think something really important that I would encourage people, if you're moving to a new place and are worried about making friends is like, before you get out there. have pick one thing one activity one group if you you know go to church like pick a church that you're like all right when I get there I'm going to go and I'm going to try to get plugged in I have at least a touch point Uh, before I moved out here I called one of the churches and was like hi I'm a young adult I'm moving to the area do you guys have a program I'd love to get involved like they probably thought I was the most desperate for friends (laughs) Um, but I've gone I've been going to that young adult group since I got out here, I've met some good friends through it. And even though it's like a smaller community, it is also a much tighter knit community. Mm-hmm. Like already, I feel like I immediately have like a whole community of people who would have my like back mm-hmm. in an emergency. Maybe not necessarily do I have the deepest of friendships yet, but it is different when, when you move to a small town that like everybody knows everybody. Everybody knows who you are when you get there. <laughs> like. Um, So everybody that I work with was automatically like a support system and will give me advice and things like that, which was a cool um, adjustment as well. So there's definitely pros and cons. I'm learning like I will probably one day move back to a much larger city just because of my personality. Mm -hmm. Um, But there is definitely good in in pushing yourself to like different (laughs) different social situations and, and whatnot. Wow, I, I congratulate you because it couldn't be me. And actually, I say that as an introvert, we're both introverts. I'm like, I don't understand extroverts at all. But I'm <laughs> curious, like, when you don't have a church event to go to, like, what you said you were learning about a lot about yourself. And as an extrovert, like, what are some coping mechanisms you have when you can't, like, is it FaceTime? I know you have a book club that you yes, go to. Yes, book club. Like, yes. What have you learned to help you kind of deal with that as an extrovert? Because for me, I'm like, I'll stay at home days on end and being totally fine but I'm curious how that would work for you especially in this current situation okay so I'm gonna answer this in two parts one like how what I've learned about myself Mm -hmm. in myself and then uh, what I've learned about myself and like other people so for myself I had to remind myself that I am a fun person to hang out with myself (laughs) 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 which is something hard that's hard for extroverts I think we get so much you know external stimuli from other people and I literally for the first like two weeks would go to the library for hours and just wander and read and drink coffee and be like this is the stuff that I always wanted to do 
But I, I filled my time with a lot of, you know, other people, and I don't regret that at all. That is what is very important to me. But I took advantage of this time. I'm like, you know what? At some point, hopefully I'll have friends, and I won't have as much time to do this. <laughs> so I, I would walk around downtown. I would go take drives, go on little hikes. Nothing too intense because I'm a little bit wary about hiking on my mm. own. But go out and go on runs, go on bike rides, things that – would push me to like be alone with my thoughts and process and can I just listen to a podcast things that normal humans probably (laughs) you know figured out how to do um and yeah I think it it just reminded me like you can do meaningful things by yourself um and COVID itself was like a good reminder of this I think oh my gosh that was really hard for me and it was hard Mm -hmm. for introverts and extroverts Mm -hmm. you know it was just we were alone and so I think that was a good precur- precursor. Um, and then with other people, it reminded me of the importance of staying connected with people regardless of where I am. Yes, Gabby and Stephanie and I are in a wonderful book club. <laughs> <laughs> and that has been just great to, to know that when I'm spending this time alone, I have people to talk to about mm-hmm. these things and experiences that I'm having because I think that that is the biggest, single biggest challenge is like doing these things and realizing that there is no one who is going to experience all of them with you or like no one is going to have that same mm-hmm. collective experience because like at college you're all doing the same thing together yeah. <laughs> um you're with your class or you're with like you have a lot of shared experience and so mm-hmm. out here like finding those shared experiences in individual things and like calling people more often making the effort to plan you know to visit and see people and things like that and I think that's really cool too because like and I know when you first moved out there like you you had said you had told me and Stephanie like on FaceTime with book club that you were like <laughs> listening to podcasts and you said that you found you know you kind of like scouted out like where the best bookstore was and blah 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 and all that stuff which I think also was really cool because like even in your like being alone and doing that you're still being extroverted by doing those things and you're also kind of um you know, looking for locations to be like, hang out in the future with friends or like, um, I don't know, like, who knows who you're going to meet if you do go to like, these different places, and you go on hikes and blah, blah, blah. So I think it's still like, being extroverted, at least like in your mind a little bit. But like, it is one of those things that I didn't think I don't think about it, because I'm just like, for me, doing that stuff is like, fun <laughs> all the time. Uh-huh. Um, but the fact that like that was a challenge and that I think um Mm -hmm. but I think it's good that like when you got before you got there you also like called ahead almost and like called a church and was like I need at least one thing like to do and I don't know if people really think about that that's a really good like point and I think that's really a piece of advice um when moving to a new place is just being like I mean, setting yourself up for, like, success, Mm -hmm. like, because I feel like your job most likely will probably help you with that on, like, your occupation ends. Like, of course, you're going to have people at your job, hopefully, that are willing to help you, willing to help you get adjusted, all this stuff. But on the personal end, it's like, that's up to you. If you don't know anyone, like, and you don't have family in the area, it's kind of like your own job to do that. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's a really good piece of advice, like, find an interest that you know you have and try to find it in that new place. And I wouldn't have thought of that just because, like, if I ever moved to a new place, I'm just, I don't know. I just, I wouldn't, I feel like I'd be so isolated and it would be really, really bad. So that's a very good piece of advice, even for introverts to do. Like, I feel like that's, like, so necessary because Mm -hmm. it's already intimidating being in a new space that I feel like it would be just made that much simpler to just find one thing that you can be a part of or one person that you can talk to Mm -hmm. outside of your job or, or whatever. So... Yeah, hundred percent. Because you, I mean, we all grew up in the same place, and you have your own community. Yeah. So you're the first one who like goes out, and you have to make your own community. Mm-hmm. I'm like, that's so hard. And that's you as an extrovert saying it's hard. Imagine us, dude. <laughs> that's why I'm like, I get nervous calling the church, being like, hey, yeah, you have a group. <laughs> that's why I'm like, it would be so difficult for us, but mm. but that's really awesome. Yeah. Advice. Yeah, that is. Do you have any more advice like that? Like you said a lot, but do you have any more to add? Like moving to a new place kind of stuff or anything that you're like oh I wish I would have done this before I moved here or I wish I would have or anything like that um I and this is again something that's just part of 
me, I think, is I said yes to literally every weird thing that someone invited me to. Like, the couple that I live with, um, the girl is, she's kind of in, been in a similar situation of, like, she moved out here and all her friends are back, you know, in Fort Collins, which is, like, three hours away and stuff. And so she was also very, like, I like to go do things. She was also very independent, too, but she invited me. <laughs> to go to this Spanish opera with her and this little girl that she mentors like my first week there I was like sure I don't even know if you actually want me there or if you're just like this girl looks so lonely <laughs> but I went with her and that was great and I helped with this like farm to table dinner thing at this farm that she was like connected with too like she couldn't help with so she asked me if I was wanted to go volunteer I was like yes please that will be people to interact with but like um so taking yeah taking advantage of the things that come your way um something that I've been really thankful for is that I feel like God has been bringing people to me in a way like people from home or people from other places like I had a friend from home who already had a trip to Denver planned before I got out here. So she drove up and visited me. I had friends that I worked with in Zion come um, and visit because we had a friend working in Wyoming this summer. And I, like three weeks into me being here, I got to go see them. Um, one of my friends is coming tomorrow, like from home. She had time off and is just like coming out to visit. And like, even though it's been like hard to really feel like, integrated into the community completely here like I just want that to happen instantly I've been reminded that like you have community it's not just gonna go away mm -hmm. like and it doesn't just because you're miles apart doesn't mean that closeness has to separate mm -hmm. which I feel like I kind of already touched on but I just remembered how cool it was like for the first bit that I'd been here that there was just a lot of connections happening like a friend um of my friends from REI lives in Denver. And so we're going to a concert next, uh, like next week or something. So just like small things like that have been a good reminder of like, yeah, not feeling alone because you never know when someone's going to pop up again or something like that. That's true. It was just like a sweet note that people have come and visited you and, and been intentional. And it's true. You don't lose your community. You just have to find other ways to connect. It's not basic, yeah. and that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, and then you might have said something along these lines, but have you felt homesick? And if you have, what ways have you dealt with that specifically? Because that's kind of different than just trying to find a community there. But like, if yeah. you just, there's a night that you're alone, I don't know if you feel that way or not. Like, it's different to college, because like you said, you know that eventually you'll end up going back. But here, unless you find something intentionally, that's not gonna be the case. Yeah. So, I won't say I felt homesick, but I have really understood why people like move back home after a period of time or like when they start families or something, they want to be back. You know, I really have been like, oh, I totally could see myself moving back closer to family or like just even if not in the same state, like within driving distance. Like I, I felt that pull already of like, oh, in the long term, I think you know, this is great for this season and being able to travel and, and see this part of the country that I haven't gotten to experience as much of. But that feeling that I've never experienced before, I've always been like, I'll just go anywhere, do anything. It doesn't matter how far away I am. That has, has for sure come up. And that was interesting. <laughs> Maybe this is a part of growing up, but um, yeah, for sure wanting to, to make it back. Was there a second part to that question? No, I mean, I know you might have not felt homesick, homesick, but I was curious if, like, you coped with it. But I guess just knowing that in the future, you know that's not might be what you want to do. That's very interesting. To yeah. Me. And um, something that's really helped me being out here and, like, kind of justify and, like, make, make me, making me confident that I made the right choice is that when I think about it, like, would I rather be home right now in these hard times? Like, would I, or more challenging times, stretching times? <laughs> or am I, you know, satisfied that I made this choice? And I think it's always come back to, even when I'm feeling lonely, even when I'm feeling, um, you know, maybe like I do miss home a bit. Like, I would, I'm always glad that I made this choice because, you know, 
It's in the career field that I'm interested in. I'm challenging myself in that way. It's a beautiful part of the country. And I can always come back whenever I want, essentially. <laughs> that was what I always reminded myself when I accepted the job. It's like, if it's, you know, for a couple years and you want to come home or you want to go somewhere else, like you absolutely can. And this was the kind of job when I took it that I knew I would be able to move around with. And that was also something that made the decision a lot easier was like, knowing I kind of have a route that I can take (laughs) if I wanted to. Yeah. And actually, like, it is really nice that you're doing this, like, now. Like, I mean, we're all young. But, like, I feel like a lot of times people maybe, not anyone specifically, but, like, rush their life a lot. And then they look back and they're like, oh, I wish that I could have done, you know, X, Y, and Z or moved to this place before I settled down or whatever. So even if, like, you do have not you but just you in general have like regrets or specific things that like you know I wish I didn't move out here I wish I didn't take this job it's like well you might as well do it now and realize that you don't like it and you know and like not be stuck in it and like you said you can go home anytime like I remember talking to you before you left um that you had said that to me you were like but it's fine because if I want if I need to go home like I can go home and like I was like that's true like literally nothing (laughs) is holding you back if you hate it yeah you have a home to go to like it's not the end of the world like is it a nuisance to move somewhere new and then realize you hate it and it's not for you and then have to like quit your job or leave or move back? Like, yeah, that's a nuisance. But at the most that's, it's a nuisance. It's not the end of the world. So so I think it's really, I, that is really hard to remember, especially with people our age who like every decision we make seems very permanent. Mm. Um, But it's like, it's, most decisions aren't permanent. And if you hate it, then quit and leave, (laughs) like, you know, Mm. and, um, And you always have like a community to come back to, whether it be family or friends or whatever, like, um, or even if it's like not family and friends and everyone's moved away, you still have like the familiarity of this is your home. So if you come back, at least you have that. Um, So I do think that's really important for like people to know. But um, and going off of that, a less like serious note, but I'm curious. Um, So you've lived obviously like in this metropolitan area. Now you're living in like a really small like resort type town. So are you finding out about yourself that you're more of like, like, I know you kind of mentioned, like, you'll probably move back to like a bigger city, but do you find that there are like pros to living in a smaller area? Like you said, a tight knit community and stuff like that. So I don't know. I don't, would you take one over the other? Like if you had to choose today, would you choose to live like where you are right now or somewhere similar or like a metropolitan area? (laughs) It's really hard because I have only been here for like three months Mm -hmm. and I feel like the pros of the small town get bigger the more you are there and become involved in the community and become integrated like so that is hard I think I thrive on options and I love having options so I think that at the moment I feel like my personality long term is is going to tend to thrive more in a bigger city But that being said, I do see myself moving around a lot just in general. Like, I've never in my life been like, I want to pick a place and I want to, like, be in that spot forever. You know, like, I haven't felt the pressure to pick the place I'm going to build my roots yet. And I think that's from, you know, growing up in a military, (laughs) like, family and stuff like that. But, yeah, like you said, there's pros and cons. If I had to pick, I think the city is more in tune to my personality mm-hmm. but I think it's good to put yourself in different situations <laughs> I think I just talked in a circle but <laughs> no it's good and uh I would agree I feel like personality <laughs> does mean more like city type thing but um but I do think it's good and also I'm like living vicariously through you as well because like there's so many like different aspects of like my personality that I I love being in our area like people complain about our area all the time I hate it but I also like really love it. Um, right because I love being like like I complain about the traffic all the time but at the end of the day I'm so glad there is traffic because I would hate to I don't know I just like having like I'm like you I like having people around I like the city um I like being in a city that no one knows my business so it's kind of the opposite maybe of like a small knit community but there is a part of me that I'm like, it'd be so nice to be in like, like where you're at. And like, it's like a small, like tight knit community. And it is a comfort of like everybody knowing everyone and not having to like find someone to help you, but just knowing that your community is behind you. 
um, being able to like trust people would be really nice. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like just like strangers and stuff. I don't mm. know, but I will say like the people out here are noticeably kinder. Like mm-hmm. my parents when they came and helped me move out, the Jimmy John's guy who like we ordered from, my mom's like everybody here is so nice. He was the happiest Jimmy John's worker I've ever met in my whole life. <laughs> like, And someone was like taking my, I was on the phone with my mom at one point and someone at a coffee shop was taking my order and she was like, are you kidding me? People in Colorado are just so nice. <laughs> and, like, that is true. Like people just genuinely, generally are a bit more friendly, which is weird because I always think of that as like the South and not as much out West, mm-hmm. but <laughs> But just, like, I think maybe part of that is, like, people aren't in, like, too much of a hurry. Like, here we're always, like, you know, go, go, go. But go ahead. Okay. I really, really, really had to adapt to the pace because everybody here is chill. (laughs) There's mountain time. And I'm, like, all right, got somewhere to be, like – all of our activities would start like 30 minutes late. The leader would show up like 15 minutes late. And I'm like, I forget that I'm in like a, yeah, a vacation-y town. Like people's demeanors are a bit more chill. So that's also been good. I feel like I haven't been in a rush as much as I am mm-hmm. back home. <laughs> yeah. So it's more of like, they know how to slow down a little bit more than we're used to. That would be really hard yeah. for me to adjust because yeah. I feel like I would, I don't, I don't know if I'm like, go, go, go. I feel like you are more I'm than a little I bit am. More like that. I'm a little <laughs> bit more like, whatever, it'll, yeah. But like, um, <laughs> but I mean, if I do have something to do, I am like, okay, let's do this. But that, that is really funny that I didn't even think about that, that you, that is something to adjust to. Yeah. Like that would be probably the biggest culture shock yeah, for so me. It's not a week vacation. You're there. Yeah. yeah like, like it's, yeah. And like, especially like when you're working. And that's the environment. Yeah. And that's the environment of like, what you're working in is just like a little bit more or a lot more like lax and stuff that would be really hard for me to adjust to. yeah yeah <laughs> yeah I'm curious though because Gabby and I have talked about this and we need to be like know there's people around us like in her apartment when she hears her neighbors oh she's yes. like oh my gosh there's people yeah and I'm like with Amanda I'm like do you ever get anxious when you're like I need to turn on the radio like is that a thing because that would be me well you say need to turn on the radio yeah like something or- yes okay I'm like this is so quiet I and that's like like moving to this condo I just feel safe (laughs) not that like everyone no one locks their doors out here like I did not get a key at the house that I was renting from because they did not lock their door and that was so bizarre one growing up in a city two growing up with my dad being in law enforcement like oh my gosh I yeah that was a, a big change and so um yeah, just like I said, lots of podcasts. Whole time I'm getting ready in the morning, podcasts. Like, um, and so I'm very thankful, especially during the winter months, to be up here. And I have a roommate now who like I like to hang out with, so that has been good. Just to just to have somebody, you know, just to have someone to come home and talk to. <laughs> yeah, and I feel like that's another thing that would be hard to adjust to is well is like I don't know because I feel like here like you you have neighbors but you don't talk to them like they're just there they're just there it's okay (laughs) yeah but like there I feel like I would be more inclined to because you said like people are friendlier I'd be more inclined to like talk to my neighbors and like I don't know see what they're doing see what's up like I feel more comfortable doing that like I don't not that I really like feel the need to do that all the time here but I, I wouldn't feel comfortable knocking on my next door neighbor's door like 100% not because well, yeah. <laughs> yeah like they'd probably think something is wrong like oh my god is there an emergency and be like no I just want to say hello like that's so weird like we don't do that here um yeah. but it's nice that like you have a roommate and um people there are friendly and and all that but I think we just have like one last question oh Unless yeah you had another job. question but oh the job search process. yeah like just about like getting this job and like your job search process and if you because a lot of people that apply for jobs I think apply like in their immediate area so did you start with the immediate area and or were you always like let me just put like a nationwide net out and just see what comes back Mm -hmm. kind of thing and like you had no qualms about like moving away or like what was that like so after my summer working out in Utah I kind of felt torn and like I really loved 
the DC area. I always have. Like, it is a great place to grow up, and there's just a ton of opportunity there. So, kind of immediately after, or reaching the end of my college time, my plan was to to stay in DC. And then after I went out there, I was like, well, now would be a great time to explore that area of the country. Uh, Colorado is kind of a random one because I had only been there for two hours. I got pizza there for dinner one night with my friends when we were. Uh, on a little weekend trip and it just seemed like a cool spot I like that there were cities around and also the mountains and so I expanded my search basically between DC and Colorado Um, those are the two areas that I focused in Um, and I was looking in international development or technical writing in general for kind of like the nonprofit area and then now like National Park Service or the Forest Service um, because of my like experience during the summer, I was like, that would be so great to be surrounded by some of the most beautiful, you know, places and get to help protect them and, and manage them and stuff. Um, and I, yeah, I just was applying for both of those places pretty consistently, any jobs. Oh, and, and like nonprofits in Colorado too. So I was looking in like Colorado Springs, like with compassion and, and stuff like that as well. And this was the first one that I got um, an interview with. And that's why I was like, wait, should I wait? Because this is the first one. I don't know. And like I said, I feel like it was a, I would always kind of regret it if I didn't go and try. And, And the biggest thing that I feel like I haven't emphasized yet is like, I get to live in one of the most beautiful places. And that has been a real plus, like a big like if even if I'm having a hard day I'm like oh like I look out my window and I have just this stunning view and like this is a part of my personality that I feel like I maybe haven't gotten to explore as much and I think that being out here I've gotten to really lean into that and go on weekend trips to different places in Colorado or different places in Wyoming or Utah and and really lean into that part of, of my personality and grow in that um, as well. I deviated a little bit from the <laughs> job search thing. Do you have any That's other fine. questions about that? <laughs> um, unless you had anything else to add, I think, or if you had any follow-up questions, I think, uh, no, you're not here. I'm like, it's already hard enough to just find a job in general sometimes. And yeah. like, she's like, but I'm going to find one in Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> you're amazing. <Yeah. laughs> um, but I think the, the note we wanted to end on was, and we've discussed this throughout the whole you know episode, but what piece of advice would you give to somebody who's kind of our age, maybe finished college, and wants to try moving somewhere that has, like, anxiety about it? Because I, I, I can tell you right now, I, I don't think I can ever do it. We talked about that. I feel like some days I could, and then other days I'm like, I really like this area. But then other, like, here in Utah, I'm like, I want to move somewhere, like, completely different and just, like, yeah. not start over, but, like, just be <laughs> somewhere completely different, different, different would be, like, so cool. And challenge yourself. I feel like if I was feeling bored – maybe but I don't know what piece of advice you have as to what you've learned what's good about it what's bad about it like what would you tell somebody who's in that contemplating it I would say know the reasons that you're doing it for and I of course made a pro and con list and (laughs) (laughs) and just know like are the reasons that you're moving big enough to keep you there when it's hard or to make it worth it or to know that you're going to come out of this regardless of if it's really challenging with like a positive experience. And for me, I knew that like, I'm not going to regret it. I've never regretted going somewhere new and trying something different. Um, Knowing that it's furthering your kind of long-term goals. Like even if this, which I, I do think the Forest Service in this area is kind of what I want to do for a, a long time. So that's been a great thing to find out. But knowing that, like, it's a positive step and not a dead end. Like, if you're working, go, like, going somewhere across the country for a job that doesn't really have a lot of potential for you to move up and you don't know it's the one that you want, like, that's a big factor because – like I said, like this kind of gave me options. Like even if I didn't love it, I could go somewhere else with it and it would still be a positive step. Um, and yeah, just knowing who you are as a person, like even though I, I love change and I thrive on change, I was like, okay, this is going to be a big challenge for you. Like 
like give myself a little pep talk like it's okay <laughs> for it to be hard for a little bit and for you to be growing um and I'll also say like with the job search process I think for seven months I just felt panicked because I was like mm-hmm. I need to have a full-time job I need to know what I want to do I need to, it to be in my dream career field and everything and I had to really sit myself down sometimes and be like put in the the work put in the due diligence but enjoy your life and what you're you have going for you right now and the people you have around you and like that makes the job search process a lot better even though it sucks and it's awful and it's really frustrating and I feel like everybody goes through it Mm -hmm. at different parts in their life even if it's not right at the beginning of the job search maybe they get stuck in their first job in like a career field they thought they were gonna love and now they can't get out of it so now they're going through the job search like we all go through this frustration at times so like enjoy (laughs) as much as you can like the place that you're at while still putting in the work but don't stress yourself out about it people always worry about like doing like enough and I think as long as you're making steps you're doing enough yeah and honestly like mic drop that was all like yes I agree 100% um and that's I do like what you said about like if someone is thinking about moving across maybe not across country but just someplace new for a job like first asking yourself like well okay am I moving across the country for this job that is going to be a complete dead end or is there actually room for me to grow in this field like is it going to be worth it for me to like move my whole self across the country to pursue this job that I might only be in for like a year and then not even be working in this field. Like, is it even gonna, is it even gonna like help my resume out? Is it even gonna like give me good connections? Is it even gonna, and I I think that's really, that's like a really good point that I didn't think of. Cause it's like one of those things that when people are thinking about taking another job or moving across country, it's like, okay, well you have to look at like the bigger picture. Right. And I think, I think a lot of times that's overwhelming for people to do, but I feel like that's like the necessary thing that like, you have to do it's like okay in five years is this job on my resume gonna matter or is it gonna be one of those things that my employers just kind of ignore because it's like <laughs> it re- like why would I you know so I really do love that and um and yeah, yeah. I don't know you you pretty much like wrap all, all that up and she was <laughs> so, like we put a ball on it yeah and can I ask you guys one question yeah if you had to pick hypothetically a place right now that you would move to far away what far, I know what I'm, I, I, I <laughs> wait, give a walk. No, 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 no. Okay, okay so I can this for a week, but to live there, um, yeah, but like, don't don't put too much pressure on it, you know. Just yeah. like if you could live somewhere right now, where would it be? In the U.S. or anywhere? Anywhere. Um, I. Not that I've been like looking, but like I have been like trying to consider because I don't want to live here for the rest of my life. Even if I come back, I do want to move away for like, you know, yeah. at least. But um, I was con- like, I've been looking at like, once again, not looking at seriously, but just like looking at like, oh, it, you know, um, like out west, like Santa Fe area or like, don't get excited. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> like Santa Fe or like somewhere. First of all, it's got to be warm because I don't do happening out your window right now no no. so like santa fe or like a desert type um where it's cool at night but hot during the day Mm. um i can i can deal with that so i really have that's even when i was in like middle school that Hmm. region has always been in the back of my mind so probably if i had to like pick up and like leave tomorrow it would be like all right i'm going to santa fe yeah i'm screaming that's the last thing i was expecting (laughs) Uh, i've never been to new mexico i'll come visit you (laughs) i've never been either that's the thing i've never been out west so it's really shot in the dark but i love (laughs) how everything looks i love that it's warm i i I, yeah i really love all that i'm not surprised i'm not surprised for me i would want to get out of the u.s um because i'm I'm from an island so (laughs) but i wouldn't go back to puerto rico because i would go to visit but I wouldn't live there but I think I would want to go to Europe because of the face of life and I think it's super pretty I love castles um and I think she'll just go live in a castle I would Scotland. go live in a castle and be fine in Scotland that or I don't know either Switzerland or Sweden now you're saying okay. Switzerland I am saying that more often I know 
She made fun of me for the longest about Switzerland and like I we did. wanted to go visit. And now she's like, I'm going to go to Switzerland. I mean, I'm very expensive, but I think if I had like no financial problems, I would try it out because I love the cold. Yeah, I'll be yeah. happy in the snow. I think it's a different, like you said, pace of life. And I'm like, it's on the other side of the world. I'm like, if I'm going to go somewhere and try it out, let me go somewhere and be uncomfortable and figure out my life. So, and yeah. then when I get too cold, I'll go to Santa Fe. There you go. You can come to Japan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I you made me like reflect on my life a little bit there. I was like, let me switch it up right now. <laughs> a little bit. But um, but thank you so much for talking with mm-hmm. us. This has been really fun. It has been fun. I think our listeners will get a lot of not hearing the two of us speak um, for another week and just getting a different perspective from an extrovert, from somebody who's moved and is successfully being a young adult. I don't know if I'd say that for us, but we figured we're it out. Doing it. We're, we're doing it. We're doing it. Like, but you're like a real adult. Like you moved away and you're like <laughs> doing your thing. So that's so awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, we appreciate Thank it. you. It was an honor. As you know, I am a lifelong fan. So Oh, <laughs> I know. You're like number one supporter, Amanda. And um, yeah, I'm just so glad that like we're all staying in touch and you're doing your thing. And it's so awesome to see you like do your thing after knowing you for so long and yay we're still friends and it's so awesome that like I don't know I'm just really proud of you and like all you're doing and that you're being like an adult and like doing the thing and you moved away and you're making it work and it's so awesome so thanks for talking with us yeah. thank you if you yeah. learn one thing stay in touch with your friends because yes. this is exhibit that's like, <laughs> yeah that's like the number one lesson out of this whole thing mm, I like that and uh, like always for the rest of our listeners we'll see you next week see you next week something else I don't know I don't know what we're doing it's not gonna be as amazing as this no so but still tune in but still come back (laughs) (laughs) bye everybody bye bye